Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Farza, and welcome to episode two. This episode, we are going to talk about variables. But before I talk about variables, let me um, show you something that is pretty cool, and it's something I'm going to be doing a lot this video, so I decided to show you now. And it's, pretty, it's called commenting your code. And basically what that means is we can pretty much put notes in our code that only we read. Our program does not read our notes. And it, helps us, it can help us keep track of what we're doing. For example, this is how you comment. Slash, slash, and everything after the slash, slash on this line, on line four, will not be read by our computer when we run our program. It'll pretty much ignore that line, line four, because of, because, because of this uh, slash, slash. And I can put whatever I want. I can put kappa. And our program, it doesn't matter. But mostly what it's used for is it's used to help you know, organize your program. So you can say, hey, this is our main. And we can put as many comments as we want. It doesn't matter. We can put one here. We can say, this is where we print. And like I said, it doesn't help our program at all. It just helps us understand our program. So that is a comment. So this is what we had last time. Let's delete this. Now let's talk about something super cool called variables. Um, and if you've if you've been to any math class, you know, you know what a variable is. So you know if when x is equal to something like x is equal to ten, that's a variable, right? X is the variable. So what are variables used for in the programming world? Well, let's use League of Legends as an example. In League, there are a ton of champions, and each champion has a bunch of skills, and each of those skills have a bunch of numbers that correlate with how much damage those skills do, right? That is a lot of information. And you want to have a good way to keep track of all that information, to organize all that information in a, um, in a nice manner. And we do that using variables, which help us to, uh, to really keep track of everything. So we don't just have a bunch of numbers floating around and we don't know what they mean. Um, so let me show you a good example of a variable. But actually, before I actually tell you what a variable is, let me tell you about the types of variables. There are quite a few types of variables. But in this video, we're only going to be talking about one type, and it's called an integer variable. An integer variable is a number. It's a whole number. So like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And um, it can't be a decimal. It can't be like 1.2, 3.14. It has to be a whole number. So let me show you how to declare an int. So to declare an int, an integer var an int variable, we're going to do int. And now our, our program... Our, uh, our IDE knows that we have a, uh, we're trying to declare int, so it already highlights it there for us. So now we put the space, and now we have to name our variable. Make sure you don't have like a terrible name for a variable, like, like this one. For example, this variable name tells us nothing about what's inside that variable. Like it could have the key, this variable could have like the key to a safe, and we wouldn't know because it has a sucky name. So let's give it a nice name. So let's, let's, let's make an integer variable that um, has to do with re. So let's just talk about like re q damage. So this variable is going to hold the damage value of re's q, right? Also, notice how I had the first letter uncapitalized and then every, uh, the next, the capital letter, or the first uh, letter of every next word capitalized. That's how uh, I like to do things and that's how most programmers like to do it as well. So just copy what I'm doing for now. And like I said in the last video, you slowly pick up these things. This is common programming practice. Not extremely important right now, but it will affect uh, the readability of your code later on. So this, this is pretty much where we have declared a variable. Um, let's close it off with a semicolon. And remember, the semicolon is there to tell us that that statement is over. We are done declaring the variable. So we put the semicolon there to tell... Our, uh, our 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 computer that hey, it's uh we're done declaring it. Don't don't look anywhere else. So at this point, what is the value of REQ damage? We never gave it a value, right? We never said hey, REQ equals ten five. We want to give it a value because right now there's nothing in there. There's nothing important inside there. It's just uh it's just like a garbage value floating around inside that variable. We want to give that variable a value, something that actually means something. So delete that semicolon and let's add something to this. Let's put equal to 50 and then let's put that semicolon. Now we're seeing that REQ damage is equal to 50. We have given that variable a value. So 
what can we do with this now? Now we can mess with REQ damage and add to it, subtract to it, mess with it all we want. And it's going to be done in a lot cleaner way than if you're just dealing with the number 50. Because if you were just dealing with the number 50, you have no idea what that number 50 is. It could be anything. It could be Echo's Q damage. It could be Malphite's Q damage. But by putting this variable here and saying it's equal to 50, we know it's Ari's Q damage. So let's check out what else we can do here. Let's, uh, let's actually print this, print this out. Let's print to our screen that REQ damage is equal to 50. So we're going to do a printf, like last video, parenthesis, and a quotation mark. And we're going to say REQ is equal to, and copy this down, and I'll explain in just a sec. Percent D, REQ damage. So what in the heck did I do here? What is this percent D? Why do, you, why do you have your variable name, your print statement? I thought you told us that we use print statements to say things. And I, yeah, I didn't lie to you guys, I promise. So in these quotation marks, we have REQ is equal to percent D. Percent D is called a conversion character, a conversion code. And basically, it looks inside a variable and pulls that variable out, or pulls the value of that variable out and um, tells us what uh, what that value is and it prints that out so how does it know what variable to look at well after this uh comma here we write req damage and that way this percent d knows to look inside req damage pull out that 50 and print it out so let's go ahead and run it run this program build well, i think we're, we're running it so always close the program that you're running before so let's build and run. And bam, it says REQ is equal to 50. We did it. Do you see now, you know what, let's, let's, let's keep going with this. Let's change the value of REQ. Let's make it something else. So let's go to the next line after the print we'll ta and press tab. And let's say REQ damage. And let's set it equal to a new value. Let's give it the value uh, let's say Ari bought death cap and she has more AP now and her damage is higher. So let's give it, a, give her a hundred damage and we'll put a comment in here. We'll say Ari bought a death cap. Perfect. So Ari bought a death cap and now her damage or Q damage is higher. So notice one thing, notice how I did not declare the variable again. Notice how I didn't do this. If you declare the variable again, first of all, it won't, the program won't work. But second of all, that's just redundant, right? We've already declared the variable. Now all we want to do is change what's inside the variable. So we just take the variable's name and we set it equal to something new. So now let's copy and paste this print statement and let's put it underneath REQ damage. So technically, this should print 50. REQ damage is equal to 50. This should print twice, right? Because we have two print statements. So it should first print REQ is equal to 50. And then, since we change the value of REQ, it should say REQ is equal to percent D. Let's check out what we get here. So, it's a little bit uh, formatted. It's formatted a little bad. But you can see in the beginning here, it says REQ is equal to 50. And then it says REQ is equal to 100. We successfully changed the value of our variable to, uh, you know, to be more moldable. and to, so, so we can like, work with it as much as we want. And let's see what else I can tell you guys here. Am I running out of time? I've got about a minute or something left. All right. So I think this is, I'm gonna cut the video off here. Next video we're gonna talk more about the different types of variables and what we can do with variables other than just change their values. Because we can also do things like add to them, subtract to them, uh, and just do lots of fun stuff where it's a lot more efficient than just working with just numbers, right? Like I could have put 50 here, but then, you know, that's, that's just no fun. What if Ari's damage changes? Then we have to put 100 here. We have to do everything manually. Variables allow us to be more efficient in our programs. And that's pretty much the point of them. Anyways, guys, hope you liked this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.